once again we show how, how strong this team is at home with our own public. There, there were a lot of fans tonight. I was really happy to see the stands almost uh, on full capacity. It was a beautiful night uh, with a lot of emotions, a lot of scoring opportunities. Um, so, yeah, I think we, we entertain the people once again. Uh, and at the same time, we are doing what we need to do. That's winning our, our home games and, and being strong. And, and we will fight until the end. So that's, that's the only remark I have to start. But very pleased with the three points and happy with all the efforts the players are doing. I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful with, with them. It's, it's a beautiful uh, group to work with, I have to say. Um, uh, very good personalities, good guys that are always willing to give it all and, and to get better and to improve. Uh, and I just told them uh, after the game that I believe that they are their own limits. They will decide how far they want to go this season because we have, we have a lot of uh, quali qualities and capacities. And, and I believe that if we can keep the group uh, healthy uh, and, and during the, the last eight games, um, you know how, how tough it's going to be that international break for us. But if, if we can keep the group health, uh, healthy, uh, I guess it's going to be a, an even more beautiful season than what it is until now. Thank you, Coach. We'll go to Steve Goff first. John, thanks for your time. Um, you had mentioned um, a few times that you wanted to see more players get involved in the scoring. They, your team was relying heavily on Ola for goals. So I imagine uh, you must be pleased to see Paul get into the act and uh, Steve, obviously, and then uh, Nigel at the end. Yes, of course. Uh, I'm very happy for, for Paul, for Steven as well. I know how hard Steven worked to come back, to be fit the way it is. He's, he's a super guy for us, for, for the team. Uh, Paul with the goals uh, will give him a lot of confidence and a boost for, for Wednesday and for the, the rest of the season. And Nigel coming back from, from injury and uh, showing his quality. So um, I, I think at, at this point with 45 goals, we are the second, the, 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 the team with the second most goals in the league. That's, that's, that's fantastic, you know, for a team that only could score 25 goals. Last season, that's that's a massive progress, and, and once again, this is this is beautiful, especially for a coach like me, like likes so much playing offensive football, uh, giving emotions to to the fans, and scoring so many goals is it makes me very happy. We'll go to Jason Anderson. Uh, Iron on, thanks for speaking with us, and congrats on the on the win and, and getting getting as many goals like you just said. Um, I was curious a little about uh, in central midfield. You you often face this three v two overload on, on paper, where they had three and you've got two. Um, and you have talked a few times after games about getting the forwards to help create a four v three instead. It seemed tonight like Russell and Junior both had a lot of time on the ball. Um, how did they manufacture that? What, what were you doing to allow that to happen? Well, to be honest with you, today we didn't want to change anything knowing that we needed to play our game and keep our formation. The only tip I had was that we, when we were pressing that Andy becomes a midfield player. Andy was pressing all the way, most of the times on, on Acosta. Um, and, and I think it, it worked pretty well. And not always it's a matter of pulling someone backwards, but sometimes it's pulling someone forwards. And especially Cincinnati was only playing with one number nine. The second forward was, was Lucho, who was playing everywhere. Uh, so many times was was three against one. So three centre-backs against one. So at that time it was good for us to push one centre-back on the midfield and to be almost with a back four and, and, and converting a centre-back into a midfield player, not only to press, but also when we have the ball to create an overload as well on the midfield. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the flexibility this team has. And when you have profiles like Andy or like Julian, 
who are also used to play as a midfield players, uh, you you can do that. So the team is is getting very smart and and it's with the time it's more about details. It's, it's sometimes about just realizing we can't build up anymore. We are under pressure, and for me it's not a shame to sometimes kick the ball in the stands and reorganize. And I think at, at times we need to be a little bit more. Uh, smart from that point of view uh, to avoid uh, making mistakes and to avoid putting the opponent in in good places to create uh, opportunities but in general uh, I think it's, it's already the third game that we are 3-0 uh, during the halftime that's, that's massive and there's a lot of winning mentality in this team and especially when we play at home it's like I don't know, it's kind of a nice atmosphere uh, and the connection between us and the fans is it's amazing and, and we're going to need it. So five home games to go and uh, I hope uh, we can have a lot of fans on Wednesday night. I know it's not easy that people need to wake up early the day after, but it's going to be a, a lot very important for us. The more fans we have, the more er energy we have to, to win the games. We'll go to Sarah next. Hi, Coach. Uh, congratulations on just a really exciting and beautiful home match. My question for tonight is, as we move closer to decision day, and I don't know where September is gone, um, what will DC need to do to stay above the playoff line? Win. Win games. <laughs> no, I think we need to be loyal to our system and loyal to our principles. I see many teams coming to play against us, changing formation and playing differently. And that's something that we are not going to change. Uh, so we need to be loyal to our uh, mind, winning mentality and, and, and mindset and, and knowing that everyone is important. You know, uh, today was Paul and tomorrow will be Ola. And, and then you have the subs coming in and helping the team whenever we need them. And it's kind of, yeah, a family feeling of trying to enjoy every game, knowing that we don't have absolutely nothing to lose um, because it's a team that at the start of the season uh, was planned to be or meant to be 12 or 13. So there's absolutely no pressure. I really want to see my team uh, enjoying every game and, and playing to win. And I'm sure that at the end of the road, we're going to get what we deserve. Mario Amaya. Hola Hernán, felicidades en los tres puntos. Uh, mencionaste uh, uh, un po hace poco que van a terminar los van a terminar teniendo cinco partidos aquí en casa. ¿Cómo se siente el equipo ya sabiendo que va, van a tener la mayoría de sus partidos en frente de la afición para terminar la temporada? Eh, no, sí, los partidos hay que jugarlos, los rivales son todos difíciles. Vamos a ir partido tras partido. Minnesota es un gran equipo que viene también con una racha ganadora. Ganó esta noche contra Houston, ganó contra LA Galaxy. Así que todos, todos los rivales son muy difíciles. No hay que subestimar a nadie. Hay que jugar al 200% eh, en casa y fuera de casa. Así que sí, es un plus tener cinco partidos en casa, pero no nos garantiza nada. Y tenemos que mantener eh, ambos pies sobre la tierra y seguir trabajando de la misma manera. Hola, Hola Coach. Um, buenas noches, profe. ¿Qué tal está? Eh, felicidades por los tres puntos. Eh, buen funcionamiento al primer tiempo, solo que el segundo tiempo como que bajó el equipo un poco. Y ¿qué, le, ¿Qué sensación le deja? Y la segunda pregunta es: vi eh, que en el entretiempo usted pasó. Pasaste, te regresaste al banderín junto conmigo y pasaron por el banderín. ¿Es una cábala o qué pasó ahí? <risa> eh, somos muy tontos. Eh, esa creo que es la respuesta. Que soy... A veces soy supersticioso con muchas tonterías y una de esas era así. Eh, eh, no cruzar el campo sin pasar por atrás del banderín. Lo vi a Nico hacerlo, eh, Rodri, nuestro team manager, se lo recordó a Nico y Nico lo hizo, entonces yo también me regresé. 
eh, como también esta polo blanca que parece dar suerte, pero la realidad es que acá no existe la coincidencia, no existe la suerte. Acá lo, lo único que existe es trabajo, es mucho esfuerzo, es mucho sacrificio, es los chicos dando la vida en cada entrenamiento y en cada partido. Eso es lo que te da los resultados, no pasar por delante del banderino, no. Así que la respuesta es que es una tontería nuestra, eh, que no hay que darle importancia. Y, y lo otro, bueno, el segundo tiempo, habiendo un partido el miércoles, los chicos también tienen quizás ese partido en la cabeza y comienzan a regular un poco los esfuerzos. Podríamos haber hecho ocho goles, eh, Cincinnati quizás podría haber hecho algún gol más. Fue un gol, con, un partido con muchas emociones con muchas ocasiones de gol. Siento que seguimos cerrando muchos goles. Esta temporada hemos, hemos fallado mucho. No me quiero imaginar si hubiéramos sido un poco más eficientes dónde estaríamos, pero muy feliz con, con lo conseguido hasta el momento, sabiendo que no es suficiente. Eh, lo importante es eh, terminar eh, eh, en lo más alto eh, el 7 de noviembre, que es el último partido. Y luego, bueno, eh, si hay más partidos después del 7 de noviembre, intentar disfrutarlos, porque este equipo ha luchado mucho para estar en esta posición. Nadie nos ha regalado nada eh, y los chicos se merecen este reconocimiento y estar en el lugar donde están. Last question, coach. Jose Umania. Hello, coach. Congrats on the result. Um, coming into today, Lucho Costa is basically Cincinnati's engine. Um, early on, you we, we, we would see Andy mark him, but then it became more of a team effort. Um, heading into today, what was the game plan in, in limiting it, not just his touches, but his effectiveness? And how did you think your team responded? Well, we didn't have any specific plan to defend against uh, Acosta. It was just, uh, I, we know he's an important player, but uh, we were a lot more focusing on ourselves, on our game, on on how could we break them, how could we create chances and how we could score goals. Um, so I think the team did it did it great, uh, on the ball and off the ball. And we, yes, we have things to correct. We make mistakes, yes, but that's also part of the process. Uh, we don't need to forget that for many players, this is the first real season playing a lot of minutes, like Donovan, like Kevin. Uh, like Moses, like Griff, uh, Nigel is his first season on MLS. Um, so there are a lot of a lot of things that are happening for the first time ever. I'm coming here as a new coach, and the players adapt incredible good. So we're gonna make mistakes, and that's that's part of the process. But important is that we enjoy the process, that we enjoy the journey, that that on the meantime we are working hard, but we are also having fun. Uh, we, we are privileged people working and earning money doing what we want and what we like. And nights like tonight are nights to, to have fun and to enjoy. Oh, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, just to finish up, I would like to send a message. My best friend in Argentina becomes 40, uh, 40 years old on Monday. It's, it's incredible the amount of anniversaries and, and big time moments that I'm missing thanks to my, to my job. Another special person for me is is is, uh, uh, is having he, her her birthday on on Sunday tomorrow. Uh, those three points are for those two special persons. My brother is also becoming uh, 30 September. Uh, he's becoming I don't know anymore how old is he, but from distance I just wanna uh, give a big kiss, a big hug. Uh, and tell, tell him to, to, to all of them that very soon I'm going to be there uh, having some fun.